Hello, Psalms of Hallel students. We had a great discussion on Psalm 116, and I've been really amazed uh, again and still with the wonderful comments and the great synergy we have in this class. Several of you commented on verse 1 of the psalm, and in, uh, in reading the Jerusalem Psalms commentary by Amos Hacham, I found that he had no less than six different possible explanations of this verse, of the first word, ahavti, uh, the meaning of that first word that I wanted to share with you. Um, the first one is, I love that God listens to me. Ahavti ki yishma, I love the fact that God is listening to me. But the second one is more conditional. I would love it. Ahavti in a different sense, in a sense of conditionally, I would love it were God to listen to me. I would be very happy. I would be really thrilled with our relationship if I knew that God were listening. Um, a third idea, I love God. Ahavti is not I love the fact that God listens. Ahavti is I love God, the one who listens to me. And a fourth idea is that I love the, the prayers that I say. I love asking God for help. I love being in that position of making a request of God because I know that God listens to me. Another idea is that it's causative. I love God and therefore God listens to me. It's because of my love for God. It's because of our relationship that God is listening. And the last idea is that ahavti means... I am here, I am present, like Hineni. Ahavti means I am here and present and ready to fill the commandment, to fulfill the commandment of Vahavta et Hashem Alokecha. Ahavti meaning here that I'm here for this mitzvah. I'm here to fulfill the mitzvah of loving God. So I just thought it was wonderful that this one verse can have so many different possible interpretations. And some students also focused on key. What is Key doing here? And we see Key appearing three times in the psalm, um, in those first two verses, and then again in verse 8, and seeming each time to point out what God has done for me. And I thought in all our discussions and also in our discussion of weaning and of uh, gmul, shuvi Hashem lemenuchaychi, ki Hashem gamal alaychi, our verse 7, in our discussion of that, that part of what we're talking about here in Psalm 116 is the mature spirituality of the person who recognizes their blessings. Psalm 115 was so much focused on the notion of blessing. And here in Psalm 116, we have the mature person who realizes his blessings, his or her blessings, and asks the question, Ma ashiv la Hashem, what can I give back to God? And this puts us into the temple, into the temple-centered worship of God, into the offering of sacrifice. Kos Yeshuot Esa, I will lift up the cup of my deliverance. Um, I will fulfill my vows in front of the people. I will come to the temple with that message that I am honoring the blessings I have received um, and that I am here to give back. And today, perhaps in the, in the context of our lives without the temple, the question becomes, how do we give back for all the many blessings that we have received? Um, you might, if you have a chance, look up um, chapter 26 of, of Deuteronomy, the beginning of Parshat Ki Tavo, for another description of what a person does when they come forward to give back at the temple. In that context, the giving of the first fruits on Shavuot. So we can see how pilgrims... Um, would have very much felt at home in this notion of it, receiving blessings and then giving back for having received blessings. And we see Yehuda HaLevi, perhaps, really struggling with how is it that I give back when the place of worship is no longer available to me? How can I connect with God in the way that people did in the temple? And as I mentioned in my commentary, I think Yehuda HaLevi had this psalm in mind in some of his language that he uses in the poem, Libi Ba Mizrach. I will, we will continue our studies now with Psalm 117 and Psalm 118. The next two weeks will be on starting with Psalm 117 and then really spending extra time on Psalm 118, which is long. And our last week, we'll be looking at some of the rabbinic texts and halachic texts that talk about how Hallel was recited in the temple and how we recite it today in the synagogue. Um, I want to encourage you also, I saw there were few comments on the study sheet about the abbreviated halal. So I hope that over the next week, if you haven't had a chance to look at that study sheet, that you'll have a chance to look at it and add some comments to the discussion forum for the abbreviated halal. 
Thanks for being part of Psalms of Hollow.